You know what's funny? And the old saying is true. The difference between a conspiracy theory and a fact is about six months. I have to give credit to a YouTube channel, A Call for Vengeance, for making this video. And if you hear his voice, you'll know who he is. But I did not know this article existed. It was kind of swept under the rug for a specific reason. Like A Call for Vengeance, I have to be extremely careful how I approach this. So you're going to hear words like poke and jab. And of course, that has to do with a certain C-19 needle. Now, there are multiple news agencies and media talking about this because they do indeed want us to know about it, but they do want to keep it contained so you're not going to see it in the big mainstream news. So we're going to pull up an article from science.org and pay attention to the wording they use because it's actually quite terrifying. And let me know, have you ever heard wording like this when used by medical science. January 26, 2024. It's insane. New virus-like entities found in human gut microbes. Analysis of sequence databases reveals novel circular RNA genomes belonging to obelisk. Now you read something like this and you think you're on some kind of alien conspiracy website. You think you're looking up a website that has to do with UFOs, UAPs, extraterrestrials. And no, you're not. We even have the National Institutes of Health, the NIH.gov, and Departments of Biology reporting this article. Now the word entity, much like alien, is very broad. Entity has been used before in science to describe certain parasites or certain viruses entering the body. But obelisk? But what exactly is an obelisk? We see an obelisk in Washington, D.C. called the Washington, D.C. Monument. Now, nobody really questions why we have this Egyptian symbol in Washington, D.C. that measures 555 feet, which is essentially 666 inches. That were the measurements that came out. And when people were putting two and two together, oddly enough, fact checkers had to come out and try to debunk it by saying, well, it's not exactly 666 inches. You have to round it up just a little bit to get there. The monument, according to Snopes, while it is 555 feet, in actuality, it is 555 feet and five and one eighth inches tall. It is 55 feet wide at the base. That's 6,665 and one eighth inches in height with a base measuring 660 inches wide. It's close to 6666 times 666 inches. But as far as we know, the Bible makes no mention of rounding up to the number 666. Complete lunacy that they're even fact checking this because they do know what people are talking about. They know what people are saying but they're saying, no, you are completely wrong. This is completely false because you happen to be a couple inches off. But who really knows the exact measurements of the monument, but it's always really telling when they release the fact checkers. The obelisk is Baal Shaft or Baal's organ of reproduction. Baal, a god of fertility worshiped by ancient Canaanites. But in ancient Egypt, the obelisk represents the phallus of Osiris who represents the god of the underworld, the god of the dead. This symbol, the obelisk, which represents Osiris, also represents the sun god Ra. Osiris is known to be the son of the sun god Ra. So basically, in layman's terms, the Washington, D.C. monument is an obelisk that represents Osiris' reproduction organ that's a symbol of the sun god Ra. So you have to ask yourself, what is this symbol doing in Washington, D.C.? But more importantly, what is it doing inside the bodies of us humans? Medical science are not using the words structure like virus. They're not using the words, well, this is a pointy like virus. No, they are using the word obelisk to describe whatever this is that's inside humans. This obelisk entity was not found years ago. It was just recently found. Now, I completely understand when people say that, well, science is always finding something new. But you mean to tell me we're now just finding something like this in 2024? After all these years that medical science has been studying the human body, biology, we're now just finding obelisk, these obelisk entities 
residing in humans, the human genome. This article states that our bodies are home to trillions of microbes, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and a whole host of others. Now Stanford scientists have discovered an entirely new class of biological entities inside us, which this article states they've ominously named obelisk. Now get this, it turns out that this microbe that scientists have never found before, it turns out that obelisks are very common and surprisingly diverse. The scientists discovered almost 30,000 different types of them within microbiome samples taken from about 400 people from around the world. Now, I just wonder what exactly these 400 people just might have in common. Because isn't it just funny that this obelisk entity that they are saying happens to be very, very common, they are just now finding it. I am just spitballing here, but I wonder if this has anything to do with something that was recently put into people's bodies. Because even if you're not a quote unquote conspiracy theorist, let's say you are a coincidentalist, you believe in coincidences, and you read where they're telling us that scientists are telling us that this entity is common throughout the human body inside our gut, but they're just now finding it in 2024. Make that make sense. Now, I'm going to roll the dice. I am going to gamble on the fact that while, yes, they may indeed be common in the human gut, in the human body, I am going to bet that this was recently planted there. These obelisk entities were recently put inside the human body. Now, you might be saying, minutes of horror, then how would they get this inside our bodies? Could it be the food? Could it be the water? And maybe. Or it might be something that was rolled out in 2020 that they were forcing a lot of people to take. They were saying that, well, we didn't force people to take it, but if you didn't take it, you would lose your jobs, you would lose your livelihood, you would lose your careers, you would not be able to travel to certain places and do certain things. But no, 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 make no mistake about it. We are not forcing you to take it. In 2020, 2021, there was big uproar over people who did not want to take it. You're pretty much labeled evil. You're pretty much labeled people who would end other people's lives. You're labeled selfish. But as we approach 2023, 2024, it's really died down a lot. All that talk was greatly swept under the rug. Now, like I said, they are saying these obelisk entities are common and they tested, they took samples from over 400 people from around the world and they found out that in about 50% of tested oral microbiome samples and 7% of gut samples it seems that these obelisk entities have eluded detection so far because they don't look like anything else that they know about even though our bodies are home to trillions of microbes this specific microbe they are naming the obelisk entity is nothing like they've ever seen before. They found that the obelisks form their own distinct phylogenetic group with no detectable sequence or a structural similarity to known biological agents. Now get this, because this article does indeed get better. Exactly what they do in our bodies remains a mystery for now. They could help or harm their host, which might not be us directly, but bacteria or fungi that call our bodies home. So far, the leading candidate is the strep bacteria, which resides in the dental plaque. The researchers say this easy to cultivate bacteria species would be the best starting point for studying obelisks further. Now, I didn't make this connection before, but anybody that's been subscribed to me for quite some time knows that I make plenty of videos in regards to Bizarre plane incidents, bizarre incidents happening on planes and inside airports. People absolutely losing their minds, acting possessed, taking off all their clothes, urinating themselves, spitting on people. We have people on planes seeing things, panicking. And it's just been a explosion of these cases 
as we go into 2020. And as I roll these videos out, which almost seem like every other day, the theories in the comment section range anywhere from these people being drunk, mental illness, to even downright demonic possession. But there is one theory that I'm actually starting to warm up to that I see quite frequently in these videos I dismissed before, but like I said, I'm starting to warm up to it. And that theory is how many of these people that are having these episodes are jabbed up. Maybe these are the long-term effects kicking in on these people. And like I said, I kind of dismissed that theory. I played with it a little bit, but I dismissed it. But now when you read articles coming out from medical science stating that there are obelisk, obelisk entities now found in the human body, it kind of makes you put two and two together. So as I said in the beginning of the video, the difference between a conspiracy theory and a fact happens to be somewhere around six months. Sometimes it can take a little longer, it can take about a year, it can take about a couple years, but eventually we will get there where the conspiracy theory and the fact will merge. Now, if you remember way back when to October 4th, there was a national alarm, a national alert that was supposed to go off throughout the United States. This alert was signaled through our cell phones and this upset a lot of people because they made that connection with graphene oxide that this graphene oxide was to react to our mobile phone sending out these signals. So you had a lot of fact checkers come out, you had a lot of articles come out, you had big media come out and say that, well, these people are crazy, they're nuts. They think that this alert is gonna set off graphene oxide inside their bodies, which was placed by the jab, and there will be some kind of zombie apocalypse. So October 4th came, these alerts were sent out, there was no zombie apocalypse and thus everything was swept under the rug. But then there were some people, including myself, that said that maybe this is something that will happen over time. Something that is set off inside our bodies or certain people's bodies that will develop over time. But just look at how graphene reacts to mobile phones. Now, this might indeed be a reach, but to me, it looks like it's growing some little obelisk out of it. But again, that could just be my eyes playing tricks on me. That could just be a bizarre coincidence. Now, the reason why there's a theory, the reason why there's a theory that graphene is inside the jab is because there was a document that shown that graphene was used to test the jab but not used as an ingredient. This is coming straight from, once again, the fact checkers. The Pfizer document titled, Structural and Biophysical Characterizations of Spike Glycoprotein, P2S, as a jab antigen. Now this document is among 600 documents, which are searchable thanks to the Freedom of Information Act request. Pfizer themselves did not immediately comment on whether the document is authentic. The document describes a validation process in a lab. On page seven, the document describes a process for testing if the mRNA in the jab can lead to the production of spike protein. The described process uses gold mesh grids overlaid with graphene to help visualize the protein under a microscope. And that validation process is completely separate from the manufacturing of the jab. Now, again, this is coming from the fact checkers, which some people are calling bull because they're saying that these scientists at Pfizer, they were trying to study how graphene actually works inside the jab and how it'll work inside the bodies of people. Now, of course, they're not going to call these obelisk entities graphene. Can you imagine if they did that? Can you imagine if these scientists came out and said, we found graphene oxide in your gut, in your microbes. Well, it doesn't matter anyway because nobody would really do anything. Those who are awake and those who didn't take the jab would just say, well, I knew that all along. Now look, I'm also not making anybody feel bad for having to take the jab. You can take the jab and still be awake because unfortunately, like I said, many of us had our livelihoods, our careers dangled over our heads. Many of us pushed back. But at the end of the day, 
our careers to some people mean everything. This is why I don't agree when some people call others stupid for taking the jab because others had no choice. A lot of people, when they lose their career, will end their lives. But me making these videos is to show how we are constantly being played. Oh, it's a common microbe. It's very common throughout the human body, but we're just now finding it in 2024. Come on. So you hear me talking about graphene, but what exactly can graphene do to the human body? Well, it can induce cell death through DNA damage. Graphene oxide is cancerous. Graphene oxide promotes cancer metastasis through associating with plasma membrane. Now, I'm gonna prove a point here because this all connects. Look at the articles that are coming out by the media. Cancer cases to rise steeply by 2050. What are the causes? The WHO recently released the latest cancer data estimating the global cancer cases may rise by 77% by 2050. There is a rise in colon cancer in young adults. One month ago, cancer is striking more young people and doctors are alarmed and baffled. So yes, while there is a growth in population, we have also been growing in technology, medical science, science, in health. And you mean to tell me that cancer is going to just randomly explode. It would have nothing to do with that phallic symbol in certain people's bodies, now would it? That phallic symbol that oddly looks like graphene oxide when it's right next to a mobile phone that's going off. They don't know why these obelisk entities are inside people's bodies or in certain people's bodies. They don't know why cancer rates are exploding by 2050. But what they do know is that these two have nothing to do with one another. Maybe it is indeed just one big coincidence. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you wanna see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like, as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.